Hey folks, I'm really excited to say that we have a brand new version of On One Photo Raw, the 2026 version. Hey folks, I'm Sean McCormick, and we're going to take an overview of this brand new software, or this update anyway, and we're going to discuss some of the things that are in the update. Now we're not going to do a detailed look at the features, we will do them in separate videos. So this is an overview video of the new features, talking about what's interesting, and what's new, and what's different. But you may be asking yourself initially, well, what is Photo Raw in the first place? Well, Photo Raw is a photo asset management and editing program. You, you might say, well, that's what Lightroom is. I said, yeah, well, it's basically a Lightroom competitor. It does have subscription models, but it also has standalone models that you can buy and own the software. And it will never run out until basically the computer that runs it stops running it or OS has stopped running it, uh, which is what a lot of people still prefer. Now, in terms of asset management, it is quite robust. It doesn't use a catalog. Uh, and when you save, it will use its own file format akin to XMP files. Now, uh, in terms of comparing it to Lightroom, because that's what people will be doing, it wouldn't be as robust in the photo app management features, but it still has more than enough for the average photographer. There are some really high end stuff that it's not as good at, but for the most part, the average photographer wouldn't notice the difference. In terms of its editing, it is a little bit different than how Lightroom handles things in that you can build layers, you can bring in other photos and you can layer two photos on top of each other and mask between them. So from that point of view, it's got a little bit of Photoshop editing within it. And of course, then it's got the, the management. So a lot of people find this as a standalone to be a great program. It comes in the ordinary version and the max version. Uh, the max version gives you plugins so that you can use plugins with Lightroom and Photoshop and other programs. Think uh, Affinity Photo, uh, so it's you know it's it's good. It's generally it's it's a good program. And what's great about it is that the plugin versions all work together within the program. So rather than going out constantly to different plugins to get different effects being done, you can do it all at once within Photo Raw. Uh, these images can be brought into Lightroom as well if you so desire. But again, you can do your management within uh, Photo Raw itself, which is great. So let us jump into these new features. One thing. One huge thing I'm going to mention is that a recent plugin that I did a little walkthrough on is, of course, uh, Resize AI 2026, and this is now included. Uh, so I'm not going to go into detail on, but I'm just going to mention that you can find that inside of this Resize AI button under More, which is below Edit. And when you click Resize AI, it brings you into the dialog box that we've discussed already. So you have Resize AI built into Photo Raw 2026. And now to look at some of the more direct features. Probably one of the biggest things that's most noticed for people, and, and, and it's what is going on in the world of editing these days, is masking. So the masking is much improved with this. For example, there's a single click uh, to get subject and background masks really, really quickly. There's a lot of work being done on the edges of masks as well. So the edge AI is actually vastly improved. So hair selection and say selection around bushes things like that and tree lines are way, way better, which, which is great, which is necessary because it's one of the hardest things to do manually. Along with that kind of masking, you also have the option to intersect and combine masks whatever way you want them. So you're able to build very, very complex masks now compared to what you used to be able to do before, which is fantastic. So you could have options where you have bits of hair combined with certain sets of subjects and whatever the AI masks are pulling out as well. So much more robust and much more usable masking. There are four new filters and four is quite a lot actually to get in one update. You normally wouldn't get as many. So you have the split field filter. So the split field filter works on the principle, let's say you were taking a landscape photo where you've got a, like a large foreground, but then all of a sudden these mountains and things in the background, they look much smaller. This allows you to click on the image, which creates a line that you can rotate as you see fit or spread the edges for the transition. And then you can increase the size of the background. And of course it will take care of any quality issues as it increases it. Uh, so that way you can make your foreground look a little bigger. Now you obviously need to be careful with reflections and things like that, that you're still working with reflections too, uh, but you can mask as well. So that's a great little filter. One that I particularly like, because I love the look of these things and it's something I want to do more of, is the double exposure. So it allows you to take two images and put them together as if they were taken at the same time uh, with like two different shots on the same row. Now there are cameras that allow you to do this, but this allows you to do it after the fact. So you can choose images that you already have, or you can shoot images at particular locations uh, for this so that you know that you're going to get a particular shot. 
you can also dive in and use what's already there within the effect itself. So there are banks of images and textures that can be used to add to any image to get this double exposure effect. And you can use it even for landscapes. As well as that, you have the motion filter, which allows you to create motion effects. So stuff like zooming, uh, panning, twisting. Uh, so these can be applied to still photos as if these were things that you had done in camera, but you can now control uh, afterwards. The final filter we have is depth lighting, which allows you to change the exposure of the foreground and background using depth masks, as well as the depth and the transition between them, or that you can change the color tone from blue to yellow of both the background and the foreground. So in the effects module, in terms of getting around it, there's now a new add filter dialog. So inside the menu, you can see that the filters have been split into essentials, creative, landscape, and legacy. But coming over to the hamburger icon, you can turn off the legacy ones because they're not necessarily as used, but you can also turn them back on again from the same menu. Down at the bottom, you have the search field where you can enter text and get just those corresponding filters showing makes it easier to find a specific filter. For starting, you get the starting point preferences. So you can now have a look that's very similar to Lightroom, or if you wanted, you can have something that's similar to Capture One. Here we've gone to effects and we can see there's no filters and that we've got this option here on blank. And if we click on them, we can see we've got last used, on one recommends, and we have Lightroom, Capture One and other. So if we click Lightroom, we will see here that it will try to give us options that looks a little bit like what you might have inside a Lightroom. Or if you go to Capture One, it will change and it will give you a little bit more of the controls that are similar to what you would have in Capture One. We have On One Recommends. These are ones that On One would have inside here themselves. So you can see that it's, some of them are similar to what you had in the others, but it's just giving you that build up. Or you can have Last Used if you want to keep using them on the same set of image or similar set of images. And then for Other, you've got all of these options. And of course, you can also make your own to add to these. So you can have Black and White Films, Color Film, Hipster, for example, and these will give you, let's say we go for lavender cream, it will bring up some textures, uh, split tone, blur. And so you get your own starting points from these where everything starts very quickly for you. There are workflow and interface updates. The first one that's probably most obvious is that you now have the option to have floating panels. They don't have to stay on the same screen you're on. If you have more than one screen, you can put them on other screens. I'm recording on a smaller screen so you can see that, and you've probably seen all along that masking and layers takes up a lot of room. Well, we can change that by going to the window menu and in layers, we can choose just to turn off this nest and it will float. And we can do exactly the same thing for properties. And that allows us to float wherever you want. And you can put them on other screens if you like, but you can also stick them on the far side if that's much your preference. So we can nest left, and nest left. And then if we open up and show everything, we can see that these are nested in above the presets. Windows users will be happy to hear there's now support for Windows ARM. And of course, then there's loads of new camera editions. Among them, as a Fuji user, I'm going to mention the Fuji XC5. The Perspective tool also has a, a few additions, including automatic keystoning uh, in both vertical and horizontal directions, as well as automatic scaling. So this is useful for people who are doing anything with architecture. Uh, Definitely, definitely a much needed tool within this, just to get your arsenal up. So if you're doing real estate, that you have the option to do more of those edits within Photo Raw itself. Overall, this is a great update. There's a lot of really, really cool new features in it. There were some pre-order uh, offers on, uh, but I always have a discount code there anyway that we'll use when uh, offers are not there. So check that out in the description. Now, a lot of these things, especially the filters, will be shown in further videos with a little bit more detail, and I will cover the perspective as well. So do watch out for those. Thanks for watching. If you do like this, do, you know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell and all of that kind of good stuff as well. And um, I have started to move stuff uh, membership wise for my email list over to system.io. So do feel free to join up to the email list. Uh, I'm working such a way that it works more like a membership than just an email list directly. That way, any of the freebies are automatically there tied to your account. So you're able to access those at any time. Still working on that. We'll get to that. It's one of those slow things that's happening in the background as life goes on. Again, thanks for watching.